Hello everyone and welcome back. What's up? And this is a follow-up episode to our anti-aliasing and this is part two to that whole quest to find the best way to print stuff without losing quality. Now anti-aliasing, as you all were explained last week, is a way to lessen the uh, edge of the pixels as the uh, corners or curves are kind of made on the different levels of the pixels while they're being impressioned onto the print. Now, as you guys know, the, the, the resin printing happens as one layer at a time, as, as all 3D printing does. And in this particular sense, it's impressioned onto a screen using pixels. So anti-aliasing in this particular sense will actually improve the quality of your print quite a lot. So what we did was we did a couple tests based on smooth surfaces. Um, we did smooth surfaces at 30% uh, and uh, 2 pixels. I believe we did uh, smooth surfaces at 30, uh, sorry, 50% and 2 pixels as well. And then we went ahead and did sharpen details level 8 and at a 30 and a 50% gray offset. Now the reason we did both the sharpen and the smooth was because I was curious to see where exactly we would be the difference. Uh, I was pretty sure that sharpen details was going to show more layer lines. And I was pretty sure that sharpened details was going to be less um, easy to finish. Now, what I got from my actual print results surprised me. Because <laughs> out of all the prints, all four of them, at the different settings, they all fairly looked similar. Um, I could tell them apart a little bit here and there just based on a little bit of a contouring. And as I kind of hold them up to the camera, you'll see in the footage I show in a little bit, I try to move them so you guys can see how the layer lines kind of like are there in some of the prints and a little less in some of the other ones. So that being the case, I guess we did actually find that there is a good formula for aliasing that's going to really work depending on the size of your project. Now, if your model is small, I would recommend going aliasing off and just do it straight. Um, if your model is big and you have multiple parts, meaning it's like a humanoid, but let's say the head is, you know, 60 to 55 millimeters by itself. Uh, being that the case, you probably want to make sure that each part is going to be smooth. So my recommendation there is to go with smooth surfaces between 30 and 50 percent and a one to two pixel radius depending on how tight your microns are or how loose they are. So if you're going at 35, I would go with one pixel. If you're going at 50, I would go with two to three pixels. And that should give you some really good results. Now again, based on some of the tests that we did, I saw that the heads here, uh, Queen America from Elden Ring, they all turned out pretty well. I was kind of surprised and also disappointed that there wasn't enough of a difference to really make it apparent on camera. Um, because once I filmed them and kind of went out back over the footage, I said, ah, it's really hard to see the differences between each one. So what we did was we printed out another piece, and that happened to be the Kratos model, which I featured on one of my shorts. Um, so if you're curious to see how the other one looked, you can go check out the short, and uh, it will detail how that one looked, but we'll get to that at the end. Now here are the four heads. We have smooth surfaces on the right side, and sharpen details on the left, going 30, 50, and then 30, 50 inwards with the 50% models being in the middle. Now all of these look really good. I would actually be happy with any one of them. They all look fine. No problems with any of the print quality. No layer lines noticeable as far as my eyes concerned. And for the most part, the details look great. Uh, sort of a couple little support blemishes here and there which are easily fixed. Now this here, um, you know, we'll look at each one a little bit closer under the camera. But again, you know, unless I move this around a little bit, you're not really noticing any noticeable layer lines. The shine is nice. The, it has a little bit of a lamination there on some of the edges. But for the most part, this is a really solid print, and it came out really good. And all the heads look this way. I mean, they all look good. But, you know, again, it, it, you can notice a little bit of difference between the 30 and the 50, whereas the 50% shows far less on the... Um, lamination side and those edges whereas you can notice on the 30% there's a far brighter edge 
like say in the middle of her face, you're going to notice between the middle, the nose, the lips, the chin, all that's going to have a very wide, bright spot. Whereas the other one is not going to have as wide of a bright spot. That's about the only way you can kind of tell them a difference on camera. Um, and they will, it's, 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 that's going to be a little bit easier for you to fit a finish and a little bit easier to, to uh, uh, handle when you're working on it. But for the most part, details are crisp, super clean, and uh, nothing else there really to worry about. Uh, and looking at the other ones, you're really going to see kind of the same thing, whereas the bright spot towards the middle is going to be a little bit thicker on one versus the other. And you're going to notice towards the middle of the face where the peak is, is where the bright spots are. So on one model where we have the 50%, that bright spot's going to be a little bit smaller versus the one with the 30%, which is going to be a little bit larger. And again, that 20% difference in gray offset is it makes enough of a difference that you have a little bit less uh, uh, of, of, of a uh, kind of like a, a contour where the lines come together. And that is really what the anti-aliasing is trying to fix, is the contour of the way the lines kind of build the layers up and to prevent those layers from creating layer lines and essentially making the print look layered. Um, and, and the smooth surfaces, 30 to 50% works really well. Sharpen details, level 8, 30 to 50% works really well. Both of those seem to work really well. Um, now, we're going to move on. I'm going to show you the uh, Kratos piece because, uh, like I said, this didn't really show me much. I was kind of hoping to see a little bit more of a difference, but I printed a Kratos model, and I know what he's supposed to look like. So this one, however, was printed at 50 microns. I know, right? 50 microns. Uh, and he was done at smooth surfaces, 50%, 2 pixel radius. He looks phenomenal. Except for that little tiny air bubble right at the top of his head, which is more common than you'd think on a tightly curved surface like that. Um, he's perfect. I actually could not find another flaw with him whatsoever other than that tiny little air bubble on the top of his head. He's got a couple, you know, little bits of dust or hair stuck to him, but, you know, that's, that's, that's not a big deal. Um, for the most part, though, I think this really shows kind of the detail you still can maintain. So this is smooth surfaces. This is 50% aliasing and a 2 pixel radius at 50 microns. The detail is so tight I can still make out the textures on his skin the fur looks good the belts look good the leather you know the the deer hide or whatever that's kind of strapped around his back there where the hide is on the on the inside that's good the fur texture looks nice the shoulder pad looks good his beard looks good there's not a single part of this that came out blurred or wrong or anything like that so for the most part I think this kind of demonstrates that you can still push smooth at about 50% and you're still going to maintain detail. Now I'm not saying this is going to be apparent across every single print you do because I know some prints come in lesser detail than others but for the most part if your model is good quality, it's got good details, they're deep enough in there anyway, you're going to get really good quality with this particular type of setting. So again this is smooth surfaces, 50%, 2 pixel radius, 50 micron print. Um, and again, the only part I'm noticing is the top of the head there, that little air bubble, not a big deal. Very easily fixable. Otherwise, I mean, I mean, even the wrinkles on the back of his neck look really good. Like, this was a really perfect print. The original one I did had some thick layer lines towards the top of his head because, again, rounded or um, curved surfaces tend to get more layer lines on them uh, depending on the way they're oriented. And his head got a bit more layer lines on it. This one... I mean, it's going to take me maybe 10 minutes to finish him, and he's going to be ready to go. So I'm really, really thrilled with the results here because I think this is amazing to take from, you know, okay, this was already a good print. Now, if we can remove the layer lines during printing process, that's even better because I'm so used to sanding them all off because of the fact that we don't use alias on, on everything. But to think that I could use smooth surfaces be able to use this radius, use the gray offset of about 50, 30 to 50%, and you're going to wind up with some amazing prints. They're going to be super smooth. You're not going to really have to worry about sanding too much. And depending on how you support them, I mean, your finishing work should be relatively faster uh, this way versus, uh, you know, just printing them hard and not doing any aliasing at all. Now, some people do argue that some of the aliasing features don't work or they don't 
function for their particular printers. This may be true. I did read some supporting documentation that did say that particular resins do actually have a harder time uh, making the details work and making the aliasing settings work. And I don't know, this could just be a cheapness of the resin, could just be some, you know, marketing stuff from Mango 3D, but they don't sell resin, so I don't really see that being their thing. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this one, guys. I hope you really enjoyed this in-depth part two exploration as we kind of went further into this. I'm recommending right now that everybody uses either a sharpen details level eight or higher and going with a 30 to 50% gray offset and either smooth surface is one to two pixels uh, depending on your print's layer height and then going with the um, 30 to 50% gray offset on that as well. Should get you some really good results. That is my recommendation. Anyway, I hope you guys like this one. See you all again soon.